Are vintage cookie jars still worth picking up for resale? Are collectors still looking for cookie jars? I just listed these cookie jars here and was a bit surprised at what I found when I was doing the research on them. And I thought I'd share it with you guys. Hey y'all, happy holidays. I recently listed some cookie jars on eBay and thought I would go through those with you. When I went to do the research on these pieces to kind of catch up on where their values currently were, uh, what the ranges were, I was a bit surprised, to be honest with you. I know collecting fashion, fads, style comes and goes. It's an ebb and flow and the value and prices of things move right along with it up and down. And when I was looking around at cookie jars recently, I, I know they've kind of been more on the decline as far as importance in the collector's realm. Uh, there's still good money to be made in cookie jars. I should maybe start with that. But it does seem like ones that maybe previously were a little more uh, valuable are not so much now. And I thought we would kind of go through those and show you uh, in each one of these ones that are still ranking higher, which ones to kind of look out for, and where I wound up listing these guys in that price scale. Okay, so looking at Hall Pottery first. Hall is very well known, very collectible. Prices, depending on what type of Hall piece you have, really differ. Uh, there's really kind of run-of-the-mill bottom barrel sort of pieces that are still collectible, but they're, the value in them especially for resale, just really isn't there, currently, anyway. Uh, there's other pieces in haul that are more scarce, uh, harder to find in good condition, those kinds of things, and they still tend to hold their value. Although I'd say the overall for haul pottery, uh, maybe the last couple years has, has been a little lower than previous, uh, but nonetheless, it's still a very highly collectible uh, pottery company. First on the whole cookie jar list is Little Red Riding Hood. And this one here sold for $195 November 17th. $195 seems low for this particular cookie jar. And that is because it was not too long ago that it would sell for easily double that or even more. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some local markets where you're still possibly going to find it for those higher numbers. But on eBay, you can get it for less than 200. That was a bit of a shock. Then we have the whole Drip Glaze Gingerbread Man. This guy here sold for $165 November 8th. And the next one is also a Drip Glaze Gingerbread Man. He sold for $149 November 16th. And the one right below him is the exact same gingerbread mold. But instead of the brown drip glaze, they did an all over white glaze with yellow accents, uh, trim uh, on his outfit, his clown outfit. They made him more of a clown. In my opinion, he would, they turned him into a clown. So the white gingerbread man sold for $134.99 November 16th. I'm kind of surprised that that one sold for that smaller amount. And I could be totally wrong. I didn't put a lot of effort into researching further on this, but I've seen the brown drip glaze. That is a pretty common hull glaze that you'll find on many different types of pieces, including their cookie jars. And so the white one I was not familiar with. It's clearly the same mold as the gingerbread man, uh, but I, I don't know. To me, that seems a little bit scarce, but again, I haven't looked into it too much. So I was a little surprised that that one sold for what it did. The next one is another Red Riding Hood that sold October 30th for only $110. So you've dropped close to $100 just in those two sales. I'm not sure entirely what the difference is. I do notice on the Little Red Riding Hood uh, jars though, there'll be usually like a floral transfer print somewhere on her apron or dress, but I'll notice a difference in the, the print. I don't know if that has something to do with it. Believe you me, go look them up. They were kind of scattered all over the place in that range. Anywhere between $85 and like $200. This next one is a Walt Disney, uh, Donald Duck. And he is from the 1940s 
and he sold on September 16th and I was really surprised for only $100. Uh, if I recall correctly, I believe he was in good condition. I, I was just surprised that a 1940s Disney item, like a cookie jar, sold for only $100. Now this one here is a good haul piece to keep an eye out for. And I honestly don't recall seeing it in the past. If I've seen it, I completely forgot. Uh, this is also in that sort of gingerbread line. Uh, this is a train depot and the roof lifts off the top to access the cookies inside. This one here sold for $3.25 November 9th. I would imagine this is a bit more scarce of a piece. Again, I don't recall ever seeing this one and I haven't seen it in any of my collector's books. Uh, I don't recall seeing it in like my collector's price guides and things like that. So you guys could let me know, but I think that's a little bit more on the rare side for whole cookie jars. So now, what did I list? Well, none other than the infamous blushing apple, which is in really good shape. Uh, this entire body of it is uh, glazed in this very pale yellow glaze, but then the apple part, the red and the green, those are all cold painted. So a lot of times when you find these, uh, you will typically find them with the cold paint pretty well worn off, which is common with cold paint and, and part of what makes cold painted items uh, a little more valuable if they've still, if they're still in good shape with all their paint or most of it. Here's his lid. It's in good shape overall, except he does have a hairline crack that seems stable, it's not wobbling or, or seems to be falling apart or anything, but when I touch it with my hand, I can definitely feel it. It's been there, I think, for a while, just with the staining and everything on it. I don't think it's a, a brand new formed crack, but it's definitely there. So it's still usable, uh, you know, as a cookie jar. Just you'd want to make sure you're very gentle with the lid, and there's always a possibility as time goes on that that crack could expand. So here's the cookie jar itself. And it's overall in good shape. There's no chips. The inside rim is completely intact. On the inside here, you can see some of the uh, crazing and staining going on in there. And you can definitely see it on the bottom also. It does have an underglaze green. Uh, I believe that was a number 12 on there. But you know, this is also another piece that's from the 1940s. These ones are notorious for this crazing, the staining in there also. So, you know, it's something to keep in mind. Um, but there's no big cracks or chunks or, or anything missing from it other than that hairline on the lid, which is unfortunate. But outside of that, it's in good shape. So what is the Blushing Apple Hall cookie jar selling for these days? Here's a look at a couple that were sold in the last 90 days. There's currently 68 listed. There's been 22 total sold. The average runs anywhere from 35 to 50. There are some that have sold for less, uh, but those are usually ones that are a little more damaged. The ones that are in similar condition, if not a little better than mine, seem to be in that 35 to $50 range. Blushing Apple, if I remember correctly, used to be one of the cookie jars people looked out for. I think it became pretty obvious that it wasn't maybe as scarce as people originally thought it was uh, because I know the value in, in blushing apple has, has dropped drastically. A lot of times resellers don't even pick this up anymore and I completely understand why that would be. There's some that used to have that higher sell rate and they don't anymore and the cost of shipping one of these is is pretty pricey so it, it definitely throws an inconvenience and a, a halt in getting it. Mine I got in an estate auction lot. Uh, so it came with another cookie jar, I believe. And, you know, that was fine. I think I got them both for, you know, maybe five or $10. That's doable. If you can find it cheap enough and it's in decent enough condition, go for it. But just be aware that the shipping cost is probably gonna be more, <laughs> more likely higher than what you actually sell the piece for. And that could deter buyers. So something to think about because it might sit for a while. So here's a look at my listing. I listed it for $35. I got all four, five of these, whatever. I got them all listed here, I think two days ago, two mornings ago. And 
This one here currently has no views. It's only $35. I may end up lowering that, to be honest with you. Uh, I kind of kept it on the low end of ones that are still in good, con good condition. Uh, maybe flawed paint loss or hairline cracks, that kind of thing. But kept it at the lower end of that sort of average amount that they were selling for. Okay, so jumping over to California Pottery. California Pottery has countless names that made pottery underneath that generic umbrella of California Pottery. Uh, there's a lot out there that doesn't even make it into the collector books. Uh, during the mid-century period, pottery in California kind of sprung up. There was a lot of garage, uh, what would you call that, garage startup companies that formed. Uh, some people made pottery for a short amount of time and then stopped. There were certain ones that made it a lot further and definitely expanded their business as time went on. Most of them though were more mom and pop garage sort of operations and they're kind of mysterious wonders out there. Uh, for the most part, most California pottery that I come across, I, I think is really neat. I, I think that people did a really good job uh, with glazes and just different types of molds and stuff like that. You'll find some really unique California pottery pieces, some of which can sell for a lot of money. There are certain names you always want to kind of be familiar with uh, in California pottery. You've got Metlocks, Laguna Brayton, Heidi Shoop, and several others. So when you go in and look on eBay for California pottery cookie jars, you'll see that there's been about 156 total that have sold just a various kinds, just whatever was labeled under California Pottery, but about 156 of them sold in the last 90 days. There's currently about 567 listed. So that seems to be kind of on the lower end of the sale through rate as far as just the overall California Pottery umbrella. So looking through some of the ones that have sold in the last 90 days, we've got Twin Winton uh, Pottery Raccoon, and he's really cute. I like him. He sold for $124.99 on November 19th. I'm kind of surprised he maybe didn't sell for a little bit more. I think he's really cute, uh, but there just may not be a whole lot of demand out there for him. Twin Winton is another uh, pretty well-known California pottery name, and so, again, I'm kind of surprised he didn't sell for a little bit more. And then we have the oh-so-familiar Franciscan Desert Rose. There are several of these listed and which have sold. I just picked one out uh, that went on the higher end. Uh, so this one sold for $102.50 on October 5th. And Franciscan Desert Rose in general, it's another one that even a couple years ago seemed to have a much better sell-through rate and a much higher just in general value rate. Uh, whether you were looking at tableware pieces, serving pieces, whatever, cookie jars, the overall package just seemed to be uh, a lot more collectible. I think maybe the people who strongly collect that have, for the most part, filled their collections possibly because the demand for Franciscan Desert Rose has, has dropped quite a bit. So this name I'm not super familiar with, to be honest. This is Durain of California Pottery. This is a, a fish cookie jar. I think he's really cool. He really kind of fits in line with that feel of California Pottery with the glaze and, you know, just even the shape of the mold. Um, Really cool looking, neat design. This one sold for $75 on August 31st, I believe. August 31st. Uh, I'm kind of, again, surprised that he sold for only $75. He's got that really cool, like, rich mid-century green glaze on him. I don't believe it had any damage to it, uh, but $75 is what he sold for. Okay, this one here is Metlock's Poppy Trail Frog. He sold for $89 November 2nd. He looks like a really cool cookie jar. I'm not real familiar with Metlox's frog line per se, um, but I, I, I'm not sure where he, he should maybe fall or to me where he should fall. 85 might be right about where he's at. I think he's really cute. I don't know the desirability really of that particular piece though. This one here is a California Originals 1960s uh, cookie monster, or Sesame Street cookie monster cookie jar. This one here sold for $85.99 October 17th. I sold this exact same one, same condition, was 
Perfect. I sold mine for 120, but that was I don't know four to six months ago, so I couldn't find them in 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 the listings. But I did sell one of these. Uh, he took a little while. He sat for maybe a couple months, but he did sell. I remember he got well over 100 views. He had well over 50 or 60 uh, watches on him and everything, and uh, somebody had sent me a uh, an offer for, I think it was 80 or $90, and they sent me that offer overnight, and before I even had a chance to reply to their offer, somebody that very next morning had come in and just bought it for list price, which was the 120 so I was happy to see him go, but he is my first and only cookie jar experience. Not a bad one to start. So this guy here is the Keystone Cop. Cookie Cop, I guess. Cookie Cop. He's got his little hat, which is the lid, and it's in great condition. He's got a little paint loss on the underside there, but nothing real bad. The paint is not uh, real glossy. It's very, very matte paint all over. Uh, he is from the 1960s, I believe. So there's currently three listed of him. None sold in the last 90 days, but he's got his cute little tongue that sticks out here. The other ones that are listed, the tongue is actually glazed red. I kind of like him better without the red tongue. It's just a little less, a little less obvious of a gesture. <laughs> Maybe he just looks, I don't know. It's not as, uh, sticking right out at you, but he's in great condition inside of his lid is or rim there is perfect. Uh, he really doesn't have much in the way of crazing except for sort of right around this uh, inner top piece here for some crazing and, and mild staining there, but he's otherwise in great condition. He's got a little paint loss on the bottom. Normal wear, age-related wear. USA GKI is what's on his backside there. But, you know, he's really cool. He's kind of, you know... <laughs> A little more unique. I don't see him as frequently. Um, and considering that there's only three or four of him listed, four I think now including mine. Uh, granted there's none sold, but that tells me he's not a, a super abundant piece, but he also may not be a very sought after piece. So that could be his downside. So here's a look at a couple that are very similar to him. Not, not the exact same. This is the Winking Sheriff. Uh, cookie jar, but he's he's very similar similar in style and glaze and I, I believe he's also California pottery um, These two here sold for 25 and I think the other for 50 So in general, it doesn't seem that there's a super high demand for not just him in particular But maybe ones in his style. I don't know in the past what he went for if this is kind of his normal range here is a look at my listing that I put up the other day and I went ahead and listed him at $45 he's had one view which is only one view that's not not much but I'm glad to see that he's had any views uh, compared to the far more common uh, more I would almost say sought after in this case blushing apple from Hall who's had no views and is a little bit cheaper so at $45 he's had one view in the last two days I'm okay with it. I was kind of surprised that he's gotten that far so far. So we'll see what happens with him. Okay, so now going into McCoy. McCoy is another very well-known pottery company, very sought after, sort of in that same boat with Hull. That being said, if you're going to pick up cookie jars, make McCoy one of the top of your list to look for. I say that because ones that tend to have the higher value seem to be for the most part McCoy cookie jars. Granted, if you go on eBay and look currently, there's 680 roughly that were sold in the last 90 days and 3,800 currently listed. So if you're looking at it sale through rate wise, that doesn't seem so great. However, if you're looking at the individual pieces, the ones that have sold, these are the ones that are getting in the four to $600 and more sometimes range. So of course there's some infamous McCoy cookie jars that everybody will probably always be on the hunt for. They're hard to find specifically in decent condition. The paint's there, they're not broken, they're not chipped, they're still usable pieces. 
This first one here is a black woman with, I believe, like a big piece of cauliflower that she's holding. She sold for $4.95 on October 3rd. Anything that is uh, black grandmother, you know, the big skirt, you'll see it in uh, different kind of canisters, creamers, you know, all kinds of pieces, salt and pepper shakers and stuff. Those are typically always good items to pick up. They're very collectible, very sought after. They tend to hold their value. They're not quite on par with where they were even a couple years ago, but they are still on the higher end of pieces for you to find. This next one is Krabby the Clown. But Krabby here sold for $390 on September 10th. So Krabby's doing okay. He's a pretty solid McCoy piece. If you come across him and can get him cheap enough, probably worth the hassle to pick up Krabby, whether you like clowns or not. This one here is interesting. I've never seen this one before. I think they called it Chairman of the Board. Uh, he sold for just shy of $300 on October 15th, which is pretty good. I don't really see personally the appeal in him itself, you know, but nonetheless, there's collectors out there for everything and certainly one for the Chairman of the Board here. Here's a couple of the Christmas trees that, of course, remind me of like the ceramic uh, Christmas trees, Holland molds and everything with the little lights you put in them. Uh, these ones don't have any lights, however. But these ones sell pretty good as well. Uh, the top one there sold for just shy of $300 on October 28th, and the other one November 21st at $250. So again, another good one to look out for. And I would say that that one, no matter what time of year you come across it, if you get it cheap enough, pick it up. This one here is Betsy Baker, and Betsy did pretty good for herself. She came in at $275 October 9th. Solid sale for Betsy. Okay, this guy I'm not real familiar with, but I love it. He is a jack-o'-lantern, and he sold for $275 October 18th. There were 49 bids on him, which tells you right there, most all these other cookie jars I'm showing you were uh, best offer buy it nows. This guy went on auction and had almost 50 bids that got him up to $275. That is pretty good. That is pretty darn good. The Stagecoach is a pretty classic McCoy piece. I'm not real sure on the scarcity of it. I'm guessing it's a little more scarce because it was sold for just shy of $250 November 1st. This is another one I'm really surprised didn't sell for more than it did. It still did good. I'm just kind of surprised. It's another one I don't personally see uh, out and about or haven't yet. And uh, it was called Cow Jumped Over the Moon, and it sold for $188 October 16th. That is an adorable cookie jar. And I think anybody, not just with kids, but collectors in general, I mean, this is one that I don't see very often. Tell me if I'm wrong, but... I think uh, collectors of McCoy in general would probably seek out this piece. I'm surprised he honestly didn't sell for more. This one here is the McCoy Leprechaun. Look out for the McCoy Leprechaun. Look out for the McCoy Leprechaun. This guy sold for $617 October 24th. If you come across the Leprechaun, even if he's $100, he might be worth picking up. And this one here is a personal favorite of mine. I think a lot of us who love the uh, vintage, retro, all that kind of stuff, we always love the black cat. And this is the 1967 Colby Black Cat. He sold for $350 November 4th. He is another one to definitely look for. He will probably never really go out of style entirely, uh, where his value will dip too much further below that. There are a ton of collectors out there for the black cat. So this is a very common McCoy jar that is found pretty much everywhere. So he's in really good shape. All of this on here is embossed and glazed over. It's got, again, kind of that uh, cream or, or very, very, very pale yellow glaze all over the body. Um, however, he does have cold paint as well. Uh, cookies up here is also embossed and then it's cold painted over. Um, but most of the cold paint is still there. There's no damage at all, no chips. This is uh, Frontier or American Frontier, I believe it was called. But he's in really great shape. He has no exterior markings uh, for name or anything. Inside of him looked great. I don't really think there was any crazing, certainly no staining or anything. I mean, it's in great shape. 
These ones are not super hard to find in good shape, however. They tend to be pretty common ones to come across. So here's a look at one that sold in the last 90 days. I believe it was for $35. There are several of these exact ones listed, and I'm sure in various ranges of condition. However, again, this is one that is not scarce. It's not hard to find and, and out in the wild or elsewhere. They are listed on eBay uh, for anywhere from $25 to $100. I don't know who's paying $100 for the cookie jar. Couldn't tell you. I couldn't imagine listing that cookie jar at $100. Some people are. If someone's willing to pay a hundred for it, more power to you. So here's a picture of my listing from a couple days ago when I put it up. I listed it at 35. Uh, he's in great condition. Again, no crazing, no staining, no chips, no cracks. Perfect condition outside of just a little bit of paint loss to the cold paint over cookies. Uh, it's already had two views, which again, that still kind of surprises me that it's had a couple views. For this not being a scarce piece and not highly sought after piece, the fact that there's been even two people that have looked at it surprises me that that's happened in the last two days. So this guy here, he's got to be a fan favorite. I just, come on, look at him. How cool looking. He's one of my favorites, I got to be honest. He's got, you know, sort of that, that common brown drip glaze that all these companies kind of did uh, in that time period, especially that mid-century time period. Um, but the whole body and everything is uh, glazed, that drip brown glaze. But in this part up here on his little buddy is cold painted. So he's got just a tiny bit of uh, loss to the cold paint, which this is the finial to raise him up off the jar. So that's not surprising to me and actually most of the time when I see these this guy looks great most of the time they're about naked to the bone there ain't no paint left on him anywhere so he's still very vibrant I'd say 90 plus percent of his paint is still there he looks really really good uh, the underside here this here is like a little not a chip it's glazed over so that's something that happened during uh, it, the manufacturing of it on here though there is a spot right here where there's a tiny chip, not to the ceramic, but to the glaze there. So just a tiny little flea bite. No cracks to it or, or any other damage like that. Um, the inside of him is in great shape. No cracks or damage out here. Uh, you can see where like his feet and stuff are molded in there, but there's no cracks, no crazing. He looks really great. So I believe he was number 271. I can't see it as well right now, but I think he was 271. There's his McCoy mark. This mark here was used, I believe, in the 70s and 80s for McCoy. So um, that was the time period that he was produced in. And he's got like that hmm, Marcrest uh, sort of daisy-like or flower sort of pattern on him, which I, I thought he was pretty cool looking. He's heavy, though. He is a heavy cookie jar. He's going to, he's going to cost a little bit to ship. So I would personally think that Tommy the turtle there is pretty collectible. Here's a couple of him that sold recently. Um, there's actually quite a few of him listed. Uh, they're listed anywhere from $20 to $75, but there's only been three to four of him sold. Here's a look at my listing of him. I went ahead and put him down for $75. He's in perfect shape. Uh, he's had two views so far, which tells me there's some interest in there. Uh, pieces like him generally are pretty collectible for, for people. Uh, he's is McCoy. He is vintage. He's a cool turtle. He's in perfect condition. His butterfly still has all its paint. By golly, I wouldn't be surprised if he sells for $75 or pretty close to it. So this guy here is Davy Crockett, and he is a brush McCoy piece. He is in fabulous condition. Absolutely beautiful condition. No chips, no cracks. I don't see any damage on him anywhere. He does have some mild crazing. You can just lightly see it on his cheeks and arms and stuff. Let me take, let me take his head off here. But uh, I don't believe he has any cold paint. I think all this is under glaze. It's all in beautiful condition. No chips or cracks to the inside rim of him. I mean, he just, he looks great. And in comparison to the couple that are listed currently on him, not to be biased, but 
the glaze and everything on on the one I have just seems to be a, a better job, a better glaze job in general. You know, they're the same mold and everything, but the other ones are just, I don't know, they're a lot lighter. They're just, they don't look as well done. You can kind of see it says on here, Davy, where is it at? Davy Crockett on his gun there and the Brush McCoy mark on the bottom. Davy was produced in 1956. He's a little bit of an older piece. I'm really surprised. Outside of the very mild, very, very mild crazing on him, he's in excellent condition. There's currently 16 of him listed, and they're listed anywhere from $70 to $400. But here are the couple that have sold recently, and they've sold anywhere from $60 to $100. I'm not 100% sure what the difference in condition for them was, but nonetheless... Uh, I, as collectible and cool as I think he is, I don't know that 400 is going to be a realistic number to attempt to get for him. I think probably in that 100, 150 range is probably closer to where he would actually land. Here's a look at my listing that I put up a couple days ago. I went ahead and listed him originally for $98 and he had six views within that first day, day and a half. And so I went ahead and bumped him up to 110. He's had another couple views, you know, since then. We hit Thanksgiving. I'm going to see what kind of happens over the next couple days. There's only roughly a $10 difference in it. And so I'm curious to see over the next couple days if people start coming in and looking at him again uh, a little more frequently. But I wouldn't be surprised if he sells for the 110 somewhere around there. I kind of debated where to actually put him at. There's not terribly, there's not a ton of him currently listed. There's a total of 16. There's been a couple that have sold. So he is a, he's a collectible piece. I don't know that he's a super highly sought after piece, however, which will make a difference. Uh, he, given that there's only 16 of him listed, that means he's not scarce by any means, but he's not a super common one you're just going to come across probably not in the condition he's in certainly so here's a look at just vintage cookie jars in general and what they've sold for a handful of them and i'll just have those run on here so i think cookie jars are still a pretty good item for resellers to pick up in general i do think it's like anything i think it's something that you want to do a little uh looking up on Brush up on current ones to look for, what ones are currently selling for, and kind of keep that in your mind when you're outsourcing or looking at auctions online or, or whatever. Um, most all of them will sell. Not all of them sell for much. And when you're talking about cookie jars, these are typically sort of larger, heavier items. They cost more to ship, and that's the big downside with them. Again, I would definitely keep an eye out for McCoy if you're going to pick up any cookie jars. That is a name you would want to drill into your head is, is it McCoy? Look for that leprechaun. Look for the black cat. Look for the black lady. Look for these ones that tend to sell well, uh, surprisingly well, despite the remainder of many cookie jars kind of piddling out in their collectability currently, uh, whether that's due to economy or just the ebb and flow of the fashion and trend of, of what's in style now, what's not. That's kind of hard to say for me, but nonetheless, there's clearly tons of McCoy listed. There's clearly several California pottery. There's clearly several Hull, but kind of do a little time to dig around uh, and see which, which ones actually are selling. Uh, because, you know, I have a couple here that I think are, are pretty cool and probably, you know, could sell for more than I'm even listing, listing them for. I'm definitely interested to see how quickly each one of these cookie jars sell. Uh, again, I've sold one in the past, the Sesame Street uh, Cookie Monster cookie jar, and sold him for $120. And... I had no idea where to list him at. I was I was happy to get what I did out of him. He maybe could have sold for more, uh, but there were quite a few listed on him, not a ton sold, uh, yet he still was able to sell for the 120. A lot of the ones that were listed, at least at the time when I listed him, uh, a lot of the ones that were sold 
at least at the time that I had listed that cookie jar, uh, were in that $50 to $80 range. And I went ahead and said, to heck with it, and put mine at $120 because out of a lot of the ones that were listed, mine seemed to be in really good condition with the paint and everything like that. Um, most of those were hand painted and everything. So you get a wide variety of, of kind of the general look of them and artistic skill in doing it. And I think that made a difference for them also. So yeah, I'm interested to see how long they'll take to sell. Will they sell for what I actually have them listed for? Less, we'll see. But for any of you guys out there that have cookie jars sitting around in your death pile, go ahead and get them listed. It's the holiday season, it's the cookie time of year. Go ahead and get them listed. What the heck? There's still some value in them. Get them on there. All right, guys, have a good holiday. I'll see you on the next one.